Mark Sergeant Howard Devil are you? Welcome to Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. My name is Herschel36, and I believe we live on a globe. <laughs> yeah, you'd say that. But I don't think that's necessarily true because because you've had uh, you had David Weiss on recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had I've I've had the uh, Amer- American Jew on, yeah. He's been great. <laughs> He's been great fun. He's quality. He is hilarious. Wait, wait, there are Jews in America? There are. There are Jews all over the place. I heard rumors, but I, I did <laughs> I wasn't absolutely sure on that. Yeah, um, I asked him, so David, are, are, is it true that you're Jewish? And he said, Yanni, how many? Well, I can't do the accent, clearly. Yeah, I can't believe you. I can't even do the accent. I'm not going to go there. Oh, oh, like the nasally New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you tell by my accent or whatever it is? I can't, I can't do it. Can't is do it. the rye bread fresh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, what's been yeah. going on on your flat plane recently? Um, what are the, the major topics hanging out from your shoes? Because. Um, there's a hell of a lot going on in America right now, and there's a, quite a lot going on in, in Europe. And when I speak to people around the world about Europe, they go, oh, my word, it's disastrous. But, of course, it's very quiet here. But, but, but tell me about uh, America, and tell me a little bit about um, Flat Earth. Uh, Flat Earth in America has reached uh, what I consider to be sort of a, like a, a critical point in its uh, – I don't even want to use the word evolution – its development, which is – that the numbers have gotten so high over the last three months, as far as relevant hits, that people with, I'll, I'll be as blunt as I can here, people with money are smelling money, oh, basically. Really? Oh yeah, we it's gotten well because I, in fact I did a little stat thing. Uh, you could probably look it up or, or I could send you a link real quick, where I was doing like the daily stats. So if you type in. Uh, it was called uh, Flat Earth versus Mainstream Media. And I did a couple weeks worth of stats. And what I was doing was, because I'm a, st- I'm a statistics nut when it comes, to, uh, it comes to the Flat Earth and a lot of other topics. But you compare mainstream media topics to what Flat Earth is, and you get some really surprising results. Like, for example, if you type in, and just go to YouTube, because I consider YouTube really uh, uh, an honest representation of what the mainstream media, uh, what's hot and what's not. You can you can go into, into YouTube and figure this out, and it, and it's actually turns out pretty relative of, of what's what's true. Um, for example, uh, if you type in Neil deGrasse Tyson into YouTube, you may get four hundred thousand hits, maybe five hundred thousand hits. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, you know, maybe one and a half million, uh, and you work your way up. American Idol, you know, five six million, and finally you get to if you type in Flat Earth, you get about seven million hits. And if you type in Earth is flat, you get ten and a half million hits. And and by that I mean relevant search you know articles that are that are in YouTube. And you're thinking, okay, what's the point? The point is, is that everything else in the list that I created were either, we're talking Grammy winners, Emmy winners, Oscar winners, um, huge franchises. Uh, you know, Earth is Flat scores higher than the entire Harry Potter franchise. It scores higher than everything ever put out by NASA. Um, things that have been out for years and years, and Flat Earth has been breaking, been beating these guys up uh, in only 18 months. And why is this important? It's important because, and, and this is what I've been putting out to the people that have been, the, the producers that have been kind of sniffing around recently, which is like, look, no one's made a freaking dime on this thing. I mean, not real, not real money, you know, not mainstream money. Everything else that, you, that I've been talking about here has been done with massive marketing dollars. You know, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, you know, uh, uh, American Idol. It just goes on and on. Uh, Gwen Stefani. Huge, huge amounts of money have been made and huge, huge amounts of money have been spent, but... Flat Earth is virgin territory for this. And so now, finally, some guys are out there. They're looking. It's like, oh, wait. You know, and granted, are they, are they true Flat Earth believers, believers? No. Are they in it for the money? Yes, they are. But that's how this thing is going to eventually break wide open is because someone eventually is going to take the chance, make an independent project. Yep. Either a television series, a documentary, or a, a science fiction type film. And they're going to take, it's either going to be the biggest flop of all time. You can already see the headlines, you know, like, you know, flat earthers falls flat, you know, something like that. Uh, or, or it'll be the, the most, I still think it'll be the most polarizing um, show of all time, which is it'll, it'll be, you've seen this, you've seen this in the forums, the arguments, the, the, the huge brawls that break out because people, you know, they, it's so, you know, nobody's on the fence about this. So that's kind of where we are now. Well, that and combined with the the topics that have come up recently, like the trees thing, if you caught that, 
the 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 wave of the the trees phenomena that all of a sudden all of a sudden came out of nowhere, uh, which was I think still think very very interesting. Didn't resonate with me as much as it did other people. David nah. was. Yeah, D- David was just absolutely floored. He he contacted me right off the bat and and, and said you got to you got to drop everything and watch this. I was like, "What? What? And I'm watching this." But I was so open-minded to everything that it didn't really surprise me that much. It's like, "Oh yeah, sure. Why not? Version 1.0, version 2.0." Well, Crow, Crow 77 uh, 7 um he said to me, "Listen, I don't he, he doesn't really dig the whole forest thing at all. He thinks it's a whole lot of shenanigans." Um, and just another theory. But you are right. There's a massive amount of uh, information about Flat Earth on YouTube, online, yep. people blogging about it, people talking about it. But in mainstream European conversation, if you mention the world, the world might be flat, you I, are a, a, a deemed an absolute nut nut, okay? Yeah, Absolutely crazy. Yeah. You know, e- even if you suggest that uh, Osama bin Laden didn't, didn't organize the, night, the, the bombing of the, uh, you know, the, 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 two, the Twin Towers, you know, you are su- suggested to be a conspiracy theorist. So mm-hmm. uh, it just goes on and on. And, and what has come up for me in recent months is, you know, we have the U.S. Uh, presidential selection taking place. Between oh, yeah. Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Thump, and uh, and and it's a it's an incredible production. It's an incredible production. Now you mentioned David Weiss. He did a fantastic job of illustrating that um, Hillary was on stage to an audience that wasn't there, all green screen, yep. right? And yep. so if that's true, then what if, if that's the case? If, if Hillary can pretend that she's in front of um, uh, you know, a few thousand people when she's not, and yeah. and and, every, and the whole the whole um, mainstream press is going with it. Then yeah. hang on, what else are they lying to us about? I mean, yeah. what else are they lying to us about? How deep does this thing go? And you also talk at some point about the flat Earth would actually reconfirm this existence of God. Now, God either is or he isn't. You're either flat or you're round. And it's it, these things are very clear. Um, a few yeah. of us sit, sit on the fence and it can be rather uncomfortable one way or another. But yeah. the point the point that, that I'm getting to is a lot of conversation. Um, you've got PK Truth banging on about the fact that all these um, terrorist attacks are, are nothing more than, than, than false flags. Again, theatre yeah. after theatre after theatre. So, Mark, what is going on i believe it's all related um david i think you uh, would probably allude to this as well which is the elections the american elections is tied to this in some way in that it was something i suggested several months ago which was it, it really surprised me i know outside of the united states it's a different opinion of what's going on with the american elections but i've never seen one where either candidate no one wants a no one wants it either. I mean, Democrats, honestly, there's a lot of Democrats that don't want Hillary and there's a lot of Republicans that don't want Donald Trump. I mean, I, I, I tried to boil it down to this. It's like, really, has the American election system come down to, for president of the United States, it's come down to uh, the jilted wife of an ex-president or a reality television star. The, those are our choices. It's so far out there. It's it's like, okay, so it's either going to be the first woman president in history or it's going to be the first non-politician in history, you know, a guy well, that... Well, hang on, hang, hang on. Are you telling me that Barack Obama was a politician? Get out. Well, no, 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 you know, no, no. I know, I don't believe for a second, and I was one of those people that, that thought that the birth certificate, I know full well that he was not born here, and that they skirted that issue, and they fabricated the thing, and then the they, not, then they killed... He's not even black. He's not <laughs> even black. He's not even black, okay? I, and, I, you know, I don't even... Let's not go down his yeah. sex, sexuality conversation, and let's not go down the conversation of yeah. who, who Mike, Mike Michelle is. You know, let, let's not. Yeah, exactly. There. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Was was that Michael or Michelle? I can't. I can't. I keep forgetting. But yeah, or the Joan Rivers thing. Yeah, that I knew. I knew the second she went into that hospital. By the way, because you know when Joan Rivers died and why she died, you know, because she didn't pull back the joke. She's a comedian by trade, but she's very well respected in the Hollywood community. And when she didn't pull back the joke. That was it. That was, you you don't go saying, oh yeah, by the the boy, boy, the, the first lady is actually a guy, and and then you don't like you don't you don't kid, you don't laugh, you don't do anything. 
dead serious walk into the hospital. It's like, really? You, you're, you're doomed. Because at that point, you, they had to, I'm sorry, I had to say, I have to say this, but you had to take care of her from a Secret Service standpoint because the follow-up questions were never going to ever go away. She was, every time she was interviewed from that point forward, that question is going to come up. And they couldn't take that chance. Anyway. That, that's uh, right. That's a very good point. So, so here's the deal. Uh, what I was thinking was, is like, because it's, uh, several people uh, I've talked to in, in my circles have agreed with me on this, is that the two candidates we've got there are so uh, distasteful. You know, we, we nobody wants them that maybe there's a third option. And that is, what's, what's the third option? I go, what if Obama stays in office? Exactly. And you heard some of this already. Where It's like... It, it, it makes perfect sense because that's if, – if I was going to write this, if I was going to play this out, this is what I would do. You make two candidates that are so horrible that the incumbent, even though he's hated, you know, is still – it's like, well, at least we know him. Devil you know versus the devil you don't know. But it's like, oh, how can he stay in office? You have to have some sort of crisis, whether domestic or international, can be either. Uh, you know, it could be a multi-stage terrorist attack against the United States. It could be a multi-national attack against, you know, pick, take your pick, Paris, London, uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Take, take your pick. The, um, but once that happens, and it's got to happen fairly soon, then you say, well, you know, the climate isn't, isn't good for any sort of election. You suspend the election, and it's like, okay, then what? Then you can go into anything. Then you can, you can do whatever you want. Uh, for example, it, it's... Why Why would you do something like this? Because some people, and me included, have said that Flat Earth is, you know, and the people that have said Flat Earth is a psyop, they're not wrong. Flat Earth is part of something bigger. Uh, do I still think that Flat Earth is absolutely real? Yes, I do. Do I think it's part of a multi-stage event? Yes, I do. Uh, it is part of, it is, it is, if you believe, if you're a boxing guy, you know, it's the left hook, the left jab before the right hook. The thing is, what's the right hook? What's bigger than flat earth? What, is, what do you have to introduce flat earth for? Uh, you know, I try to look at the bigger picture. We, you know, I, I've been doing this you know, as long as anybody, uh, except of Matt Boylan and, and a few months Eric, Eric was doing his before me. But the bigger picture is something like this. You need you need flat Earth to be explained by something, meaning flat Earth was not anyone that that thinks that flat Earth was introduced by accident are kidding themselves. Flat Earth, what what I mean was since I've been you know I'm a statistics nut and I've been going through this thing, I have never seen a topic which met with almost no resistance whatsoever. Now people will say, well, no, Neil deGrasse Tyson came out on television and he talked about it, and and there's other people that have said that have condemned it. I'm just going, yeah, but that's just adding fuel to the fire. That's just firing wooden arrows into a bonfire. You know, it doesn't it not it, it looks like you're doing something, but you're actually making it much much worse. Uh, the search engines, for example, uh, you can look this up on Google right now if you want. It, even the search engine priority has changed. So if you type in Earth is or the Earth is into Google, see what's the first thing that shows up at the top, top of the list. And that's, you know, that's worldwide. The Earth is flat. Okay. That, that, well, that's a very good point. I've just typed that in, people. You can do it yourself. I've, I'm on google.co.uk. I typed in Earth is and it came is flat. The yeah. next next one is round. The next is Earth is flat truth. And then the next is Earth is hollow. Yeah. Nice. Now, and, now, and, if, and if you keep going down, it'll be like Earth is made by God and blah, blah, blah. But this, but this is interesting because Google is arti uh, AI. It's artificial intelligence. Okay. Yeah. So every time we are engaging with Google, it becomes more intelligent. That the, the compute system, that the algorithm becomes more, more and more intelligent. So we're True. teaching, we're teaching the art, uh, the AI to be able, be able to predict now. This very interesting. My mm -hmm. first hand experience of Google was um, uh, before Brexit. Okay, I was long the markets the night before the vote for Brexit. I assumed that the UK was going to vote to stay in. Then I found a report on Google that said that their demographics have suggested that the, the exit vote was going to win. I made a couple of calls to a couple of friends and said, what do you think? They said, well, Google's generally right. Okay. And I went short, made a fortune, made an absolute fortune. I went short. So I sold my long positions on the DAX, the Dow, the CAC and the FTSE and took my profit. And then I went short. Boom, and it fell, you know, 
the 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 the, the, the yeah, they're up to ten percent the Dax Bell. I can't remember nice. off the top of my head. Yeah, but the, that's, that's, that, that's I'm excellent. not saying that because you know it's nice to win some cash because it all, always is. But it's I'm saying it's the sure. power of Google and and AI and the bigger question about what is flat Earth really going on? What's it, what's flat Earth all about? Because you've been on this bandwagon for let's say eighteen months, maybe to two years. Yeah. You know, you're one of the pioneers. But of course, lots of people say that you're a shill, okay? Of course. Yeah, yeah it's, it's David Vice is a shill, apparently. Um, yeah. And, and so it goes on and on and on. Um, yeah. So, so there is a there's a definite conversation taking about uh, taking place about flat Earth. You're not allowed to speak about it in normal circles, um, but it seems that the politicians that and politics and uh, global ge- geopolitics seems to be a bit of a scam and um, nothing more than what I term Hollywood, which is yeah. uh, politics and Hollywood, Hollywood. Um, so, so what is, through your experience, what you're going through right now, what's the bigger game? The bigger game has got to be, and I, and I hate to I hate to use it because you're going to have to put in some dramatic music over when I, when I say this, you know, dun, 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 which is, Look, eventually you're going to have to, if you're the powers that be, you're going to have to go for something which we've all been talking about for years and years, which is, it's going to sound cliche when I say it, the new world order. How do you do that? Eventually you're going to have to do the Ronald Reagan speech, which is you're going to have to create a threat or some sort of outside influence, and you're going to have to introduce that to the population. It sounds insane it sounds like a science fiction movie it sounds like a twilight zone episode but that's what you do and by that i mean you set up the rumors of flat earth to get people open-minded to things so that at the very least they don't you know completely think that whatever's next is is crazy because flat earth is is the craziest thing ever right so what is bigger than flat earth there's only a couple things unfortunately you know if if you're a plot writer it's like oh we've we've unfortunately we've we've funneled ourselves into one of two things and that is one would either be and both of them actually are the same thing which is you've got to create some sort of celestial event where the impression of it can be turned or steered into what the government wants, the governments want. And by that, I mean, you can do it one of two ways. You can either, it, again, it sounds insane, but I've said it on other things. You either introduce some sort of advanced civilization, which has been hiding for a long time and been watching us from afar. That way you can, you can get NASA off the hook and the government's off the hook. So I'm not saying exactly you need to have a giant golden spaceship land in the middle of London or Paris or wherever you want. But that would be one way of doing it. You have some sort of alien civilization show up or announce itself. Heck, maybe it's hovering in the sky, right? And they say, you know, we have, we're, we're responsible. You're not living on a globe. You're living in an enclosed system. We were responsible for it, whether they are or not. You know, it doesn't matter. First, first God that shows up wins. I hate to be glib about that when, when I talk about the major religions. It's like, really? Because you get a one in five chance of being right. And you better be right because first God that shows up wins. Golden spaceship shows up. They they say, oh yeah, we're we're the ones responsible. And by the way, we threatened your government, you know, to, for not telling you. So all the bad things they've done over the years in our name are completely, you know, they're in the clear. So NASA, you know, does, gets a pass. I mean, that's the only way NASA is going to get a pass from this because if they don't, they become the greatest class action lawsuit in our in our civilization. Literally trillions of dollars where the, the lawsuit itself affects the worldwide currency markets and markets so heavily that it would become unstable. The, the companies involved are, are just too, too, big, too big to fail in, in this case. And you either do that or you create some other celestial event. And I hate to bring in the freaking Nibiru Planet X thing. I hate to do it because for the love of God, I have watched this thing. You know, this has been on people's radar. Oh, I don't know, for seven, eight years longer. If you, you know, if you, if you go way back, you can, you know, people have been looking at it since the freaking eighties and nineties, but they're still talking about it now. But either way, with regardless, if you see some sort of, here's the point. The point is, if you see whatever celestial event is going on and it has to be celestial, you've, it's got to be controlled. And here's, here's where it gets fun, at least for the government's sake. Once that happens, 
then you tie in a flat earth and closed world to it and you say, okay, you're not on a globe. Everything turns. The whole – everyone gets shocked into a whole new state of reality. And then the one of the default side effects of it is – that everyone becomes part of uh, one family. And it, I don't want to, I'm not using this because I, you know, because I want it to happen this way or I'm part of it, but it's like, doesn't that immediately become a new world order right off the bat? Because everyone's, you know, part of the same group. Do, do, does anybody still go to war when this happens? You know, does everyone, you know, do soldiers fight? You know, if all of a sudden the sky, you know, something happens that's bigger than them. Uh, that's what I think they're going for. This is this is their big shot. Eventually, you know that ha- that you have to make a big move in chess. Something that really is the is the 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 key the key move, and that's what I think they're going to do. I think that flat Earth is just the setting the stage for this. Now, is whatever this is bigger than flat Earth? No, I still think flat Earth is bigger, but you have to create it to to give them the at least the context, the framework. To introduce something weirder, and that's where that's where I think they're going with it. And so, so you really feel that in the, the the near future, in our lifetimes, that they, whoever they are, the government of some form, will disclose flat Earth. They won't have to, but yes, you're right. They will. They will disclose it, but they. I don't think they'll have to. I think they will disclose it through another civilization that will say. The, the, all the government will have to do is, is agree. It's yeah, like, oh, yeah. But, but, but the point being is is that those in power, right, we're both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I and here's one of the reasons I believe this because this topic, the the way it's grown, the type, the, the 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 path it's grown, and the fact that the resistance just isn't there. Um, when you go into YouTube, you want to suppress this thing. I mean, the fact that you know, look, you know full well, if you wanted to change that search engine priority from in Google from Earth is flat, you could you can make it in just a few lines of code, and that thing goes away. You never ever have to see that again. That's right. If you if you're in YouTube, here's here's one of the big reasons. When but I'm that, well, when I, well, let me just jump in there. That's really interesting. If you go onto Facebook and try and type in Muslim terrorist, it won't let you. Okay, it, it, and if if you try and um, spell F you know, fecking yeah. uh, on your iPhone, it will give you ducking, right? So, yeah. so, so they're controlling speech already. Um, yeah. by, and, and so the kids are learning new language. So yeah. this is a very good point, actually, right? So, so they're yeah. not controlling the, the, nope. the release of this content across the, the, uh, the interweb. Um, yeah. Whilst people like, let's say, Sophia Smallstorm from um, a, a, a about the sky dot com or Sophia Smallstorm dot com, she yeah. has been um, um, she's been restricted into what she can say because she's been very much talking about a certain element of society that are behind sure. this. So, so, sure. so, so continue, because I, I haven't thought about this uh, very much. And that, yeah. goes, that goes back to your point, which is type in Earth is and see what comes up, people. Yeah. And you will get Earth is flat. Yeah, and that's changed only in the last few months. And, you know, the, the flat Earth community has done this. It has changed it on its own and they've carved it you know this the, they did that without mainstream help they did this without marketing dollars this was carved out of solid rock you know it, that but but i ran into this i and i it was reinforced more and more from the people that contacted me you know i have my email and my phone number out there and i get a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails and i see this trend where people are saying oh yeah I was listening to, I was just watching conspiracies and, you know, Google's got that autoplay that's been happening for the last year or two. And all of a sudden, Flat Earth will just jump into the screen. It'll be like, I'll be watching a JFK video and Flat Earth will come on. Or the the right-hand side uh, where it says recommended for you, there'll be several Flat Earth things. And if anyone knows anything about coding, you know it's the ultimate form of control when it comes to information. And that is, if you don't want people to yeah, to ever see flat earth it is all of like two or three lines of code and all you do is you say if you see any video with flat and earth next to it in the title and you can, you can make whatever variation you want you don't recommend it to every anybody ever and it's the exact opposite it gives not only does it get recommended to a lot of people for no apparent reason it also 
shows up in the autoplay to where if you're not paying attention to your machine, and I, I, can't, I cannot tell you how many people I ran into where or listened to where they, they would say, oh, yeah, I was just doing the dishes or, or working on a hobby. And all of a sudden, some guy was talking about flat earth on the other side of the room. And it's like, and, and you're listening to it and you're going, wait, what, what, what's going on? And then after a while, it's, you know, you're, if you listen to it, remember, I, I treated Flat Earth kind of like the literal Pandora's box. If you listen to it for two or three minutes, you, it's in your head and then you got to deal with it. And that's all. You know, so, yeah, this thing has not been repressed in any way, shape or form. And I'll throw one more out at you. And that was the, the capper for me when I knew that they won the sucker out was when Neil deGrasse Tyson went on national television, when he went on Comedy Central and did that whole drop the mic thing to the whole B.O.B. thing. First of all, the fact that B.O.B. Hang on, hang on. I yeah. haven't seen this. So what? explain exactly what happened and I'll find the clip and I'll insert it here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't be able to find it anywhere else except for Comedy Central. Uh, all you have to do is type in Neil deGrasse Tyson Flat Earth and you'll find the Comedy Central thing. Because Comedy Central, they are no joke about copyright strikes. And if everybody that has tried to reproduce that uh, has gotten struck down. And what happened was, you heard about the B.O.B. thing. I mean, on, early part. Hang, hang on. When you say reproduce it, mean, you mean take, take the clip and use it again? Yeah, use it again in YouTube. They, okay. they, won't, let, they won't let you do it. They, okay. uh, they're, real, they're real stingy about that, yeah. and, awesome. which is odd. And I don't, but, know, I don't know what this B&B thing is either. Okay, so there was a rapper, an American rapper named B.O.B., his initials B.O.B., and he was a Grammy nominated, he was Grammy nominated, I think, in 2011. Uh, he's, his biggest, biggest hit, I think, was Airplanes and something else. He's done a lot of collaborations, actually pretty talented. And he came out uh, end of last year or beginning of this year, actually. And he went on this big Twitter rant about how the earth is flat. And, of course, one of his favorite guys was Eric Dubé and blah, blah, blah. And... <clears throat> In fact, you can look up B.O.B., uh, his Earth. He did a series of albums, Earth, Air, Fire, and Water. And the Earth one, which is, uh, they're all anagrams, was the Earth one was a domed, enclosed, firmament structure. And he was real big on that. And he even called it, in one of his songs, he called out Neil deGrasse Tyson and used Neil deGrasse Tyson's clip from that university speech, which he gave, where he was saying that the Earth is an, is actually oblate spheroid and it's actually pear shaped. It's heavier on the on the bottom than the top. And he actually used like a minute of that in one of his songs, right? And and in the song, he actually he called. You can look up the lyrics, but he called out Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he said, you know, Neil 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 Tyson has should loosen up his vest. That man's probably getting one hell of a check. You know, and because, you know, he, Neil deGrasse Tyson is about as deep as, as you can get on this uh, without being military, well, at least complete military. And so anyway, so Neil deGrasse Tyson, he, okay, so he's the world's most popular scientist right now, right? No, no question. I mean, the man, and, and the reason is honestly is because of his camera presence. Everyone knows that it, follow the Americans example, which is, you know, if, if you want to be a, a, a major power figure, you've got to, if, especially politically, you've got to be good on camera, which is why you have people like a Barack Obama, but they've learned this for a number of years. It's like you the person has to be good on camera. Um, and Ronald Reagan. And the, Ronald yeah. Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Aggie, yeah. bedtime for Bonzo. Exactly. Uh, yeah, or, or the fact that, you know, that, that Arnold Schwarzenegger was being toyed with as being president, you know, and, and uh, you know, Jesse Ventura was the, the governor of Minnesota and, and so on and so on. But he, um, where is I going with this? Oh, yeah. So, so, so Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's actually, when you look at him, no, he's not the best physicist. He's not even in the top 500 physicists, you know, as far as academic credentials, but he's extremely good on camera. He is a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad, uh, the comedian, if you remember Sinbad from years ago. So, I mean, really, he, you, he does public speaking. He doesn't do debates. He, he, he get him on camera and he's excellent. And he's done, in fact, he's done more movie roles this year than he ever has. I mean, and we're not talking small roles. We're talking about, he did Zoolander 2, where he literally was the last frame in the movie. I still can't figure out why that was. He did voiceovers for Ice Age, the last Ice Age movie. Oh, and he played himself in Superman versus Batman. He did all those things one year and we're not even done yet. I don't even know what else he's, he's doing, but the point was they're, they're pushing him on, on camera more and more. Why does this make a difference? Yeah, they're pushing. They say the writing's on the wall. I 
I'll teach my children to think big rather than small They say that nothing can be done I'd rather learn to walk and walk so later I can run Almost didn't make it Years I lost my way Almost didn't make it to this place at this time Lost my love, found my life I like to strike a match in you Light up the universe so you can see the view How can you say that this is wrong? As you were born to live and live the way that you were born Almost didn't make it Years I lost my way Almost didn't make it to this place at this time Lost my love, found my life Yeah, I was stuck Struck and dazed When I got cold, cold drunk And now I'm sober for many reasons That I just want to illuminate Yeah, I was star struck and dazed When I got cold, cold drunk Imagine nothing can be done Ten thousand angels crying toppled one by one I do believe that there is hope We'll find the love we'll need We'll find this love so we can cope Almost didn't make it Years I lost my way Almost didn't make it to this place at this time Lost my love, found my life Almost didn't make it Years I lost my way Almost didn't make it to this place this time lost my love found my life so B.O.B. does this thing and you think that the world's best I'm sorry most popular physicist would not address it it's beneath him it's a rapper right not knocking rappers but rappers and science physicists don't really go hand in hand so Neil deGrasse Tyson gets in a Twitter battle with him and they're, they're tweeting back, back and forth. And Neil's nephew, who he wanted to help become a rapper, and that's never going to happen. You know, there's a million rapper wannabes out there. His nephew helps him make a song called uh, Fact or Flat, where, you know, Neil does kind of a monologue. He doesn't sing or rap or anything, where he's going against B.O.B. And then he follows it up less than 48 hours later by going on a show called Comedy Central. Uh, and doing a monologue, a seven-minute monologue about how the Earth is round, and I'm not—I know I'm not going to swear on your show, but he actually swears in the freaking show. It says the Earth is effing flat, or isn't effing flat. But here's the thing: when he comes out there, and yeah, of course the audience was coached, and uh, uh, you know they—they they were you were going ooh ah, you know, because he's trying to diss Bob and all this to the point where at the very end he drops the mic. You know, and says, this is gravity, you know, and then walks off the stage posing and flexing his muscles, blah, blah. Th what was interesting was there, as I was listening to him, because at this point, I've heard pretty much every argument there ever could be uh, against the, the, the flat earth, you know, the globe versus flat. I've heard all the arguments. I've heard all the debates. And you, if you know the, the American golfer Tiger Woods, you probably know the term bringing your A game. He was, the, I think, the guy that, that coined that. Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't bring anything to that argument. I mean, what I mean was, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that that he was a bad debater or anything. 
he didn't bring even the top 10, any of the top 10 points that you would use against against the flat earth. Not only that, but he it seemed like he went out of his way. It was like a token appearance where, look, he came out there and did a speech that involved math and some trig and some geometry. I'm going, this is Comedy Central. There's a lot of mouth breathers that watch, you know, watch some of these shows. It's like, look, you gotta you gotta dumb this down for the lowest common denominator. He brought no movies, no graphics, no pictures. Nothing. There was nothing in the background. It was just him and the audience. It's like, what? You should be flashing so much stuff on the screen simultaneously that you're just dazzling people with images. In fact, I was thinking as I'm watching, I was going, why Why is he taking seven minutes to do this? All you have to do is bring 10 seconds of clip from the Himawara satellite, the geostationary satellite. And granted, of course, it's a fake. But at least it shows a globe with weather patterns moving. That's all your your average person on the street needs. That That's all the reinforcement they need. That's all you do. You put that up in the corner. You say, here's the blah, blah, blah satellite. It was that, well, by the way, coincidentally just announced in the middle of 2015 for no apparent reason. And you do that and, and your monologue is two minutes long and then you drop the mic and then you walk off the stage. He did none of those things. It, it was called, why would you not use this? Why would you not use that? In fact, it seemed it kind of followed the NASA protocol, which is you you went out of your way not to show anything. Why not? And that's when I knew right right then. It's like, look, this thing is 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 the opposite of being repressed. Of course, you bring him out, and and it's this. It seems like he's doing something, but it actually, it's worse because the more now that you've got all these people, it 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 amplified the Bob thing to where every major media and you can look this up. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson versus Bob. Every major media thing uh, outlet, and I don't care if it was a website or a magazine or a podcast, everybody covered it at some point to where I had a friend of mine who is absolutely an ant, not a conspiracy person out in the middle of Indiana call me and say, she goes, you're never going to, she, she, she uh, subscribes, you know, she doesn't watch very much media. One of his NPR, if you've ever heard of it, uh, in the, in the States, national public radio, super intellectual, super conservative. And she goes, you're never going to guess what I have on my NPR alert on my phone. She's going, she's going, why is Neil deGrasse Tyson debating BOB? She goes, do you have anything to do with this? I go, actually, <laughs> I do. Cause, cause BOB's used some of my quotes before. All uh, right. Right. And so he – anyway, the point was – is a long roundabout thing – was that it's not being repressed in any way. As a matter of fact, they're doing subtle things to reinforce it because B.O.B. by himself looks a little crazy, kind of like when Tila Tequila came out on, on Flat Earth. But B.O.B. versus Neil deGrasse Tyson, that's a story. That's that's too that's too juicy to pass up, and so all of a sudden it gets into the public consciousness, to where now everybody knows this story. Oh yeah, I didn't say you know. So now you can bring it up again, and uh, people won't laugh at it as as much. In fact, I've been waiting really for the heavy heavy hitter uh, celebrity, uh, the third celebrity. You know, there's a military saying, and that is uh, the first time is happenstance, the second time is coincidence, the third time is enemy action. And I've been waiting for the third celebrity. I really thought it was the tenor, if you knew with that story that came out um, a few months ago. There was a Canadian, there's a Canadian singing group called the Tenors. Very, very famous if you're into the whole, you know, formal singing stuff. And one of them decided after the whole, um, you've heard of Black Lives Matter, you know, during the whole shooting thing. Well, he came out, he was offended by that. And 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 so during the Canadian, they were singing the Canadian National Anthem at an American All-Star game. And he changed it to, um, he held up a sign calling All Lives Matter. And he literally changed the, the, the Canadian National Anthem, two lines in it, because he was doing the solo part of it. And why did I bring this up? Well, he was fired almost immediately after that. But what's interesting was is several of the news media dug into him, and he's also a flat earther. Now, he didn't, you know, I'll hold up a flat earth sign. That would have been the ultimate, you know, it's like, you know, hold that up during an American game. But that's what we're kind of waiting for is this, you know, the, the next celebrity to come out and, and really dig into it. This is what worries me, to be fair. Um, yeah. if, if, um, if, there's, if the powers that be want the conversation to take place they want it to take place for a particular reason so as yeah. an example there's a there, there's a community around the world called the full circle project where mm -hmm. it, the, individuals are meeting with other individuals who are anti-government basically okay 
Now, yeah. the, the, the head of that particular project is a good lady called Louise Sutton. When I spoke to Louise about Flat Earth, she said, Psyop, ignore it, move on. Okay, But clearly, you can't move on from a conversation like this. That would revol- revolutionize the entire planet, right? If, yeah. we're not, if we're not on a globe, that means we're not hurtling through the universe at 666 million miles an hour, whatever it is. But it is yeah. 666. You know, the sun and the moon then become questionable. I think the moon's very questionable anyway. Yeah. Um, and and our, 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 the, the whole his Tory history that I studied up to A levels um, is questionable. The, the wars, the, the you know everything, everything. The financial system is questionable. The political situ- situation is is, is uh, questionable. Religions are questionable. I've got an ex girlfriend who works for UNICEF, um, you know, and she thinks she's saving the world. Of course. I've got a different point of view about UNICEF and the United Nations, the peacekeeping uh, force. They've been in more wars uh, than anyone else since the since Second World War. Um, but if, if Flat Earth is trending at number one on Google, right? Yeah. Uh, and Google is part of DARPA, and DARPA is part of a very dark, insidious institution that wants uh, total control over the population of this planet, then I have to question Flat Earth. I've got a question where it's coming from. I've got a question why I'm interested in it and, and what it really means to me. My ultimate goal here is to find out about God. Um, mm. However, however, I, I, I assess that on a, day, a day-to-day basis because God either is or isn't. You're either on a flat earth or you're on a globe. Um, and, and these are the kind of questions that, that, are, that, that, that are absolutely distinct to me right now. It is very interesting that you have this mainstream um, scientists going up against some some mainstream pop idol. Um, yeah. That is very, very interesting. And again, it's a red flag for me. You know, I think you're seeing this movement as valid um, um, to valid uh, what's um, validification the valid, valid, verification verification vi- vi- or vindication yeah, yeah either or to vindicate the topic of flat earth but we yeah. still don't have 100 percent proof either way it's still in the balance i'm still not convinced 100 percent. david vice and you would agree flat earth end of story let's move on you know you know but but everything is seemingly on this in this environment in this construct is a psyop we are yeah. being manipulated from start to finish. Now, that's something I want to get to the bottom of. And I think Flat Earth is part of that bigger conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Um, it is, yes, of course. I think we've been manipulated our whole lives. And, and you know, people that, that are in power, I mean, I, I've gone off on rants on my, on my website where I, when, when I started looking into just about every major American war that we've ever done, um, the old saying, you know, we the, the kinder version is is that history is written by the winners, but the darker version is actually by Napoleon, who said uh, history is just lies that are agreed upon, and you know, by a group of men basically sitting room. It's like, okay, how are we going to spin this exactly? Um, I still do firmly believe, and and honestly, you you, you got a point there where it's like, yeah, is the am I a one hundred percent on the flat Earth? I am personally, but can I actually convey that to anyone without the backing of mainstream, which is unfortunate because we all know mainstream is completely, you know, corrupted and controlled at this point to where even the, um, uh, even the elections, you know, I had someone ask me recently, it's like, why would you fake the Hillary footage? Why would you, why would you fake some of the going, look, if it's, if it's all a done deal ahead of time, then why would you want, think of it the other way, why would you want random political activities? You want to make as many staged events as you can because like, why Why take chances? Why Why bring her into a crowd of people where you don't know the outcome? Yeah, but you, you have to um, stage Hillary because Hillary's not well enough. To, to, to yeah, yeah. There's that. There's that too. And and even the rumor is a great little uh, uh, di- psyop. Which is, look, if you want, you want to paint Obama even a better light. It's like, okay, yeah, Hillary isn't maybe that bad, but uh, but a, a very ill Hillary. Well, you know, it's like now you don't want her at all. It's like, what if she dies? 
you know, why? In fact, then, but then you have to question, it's like, why would she even run at all if her health is that bad? I mean, you're going to put her in her office, then, you know, it, it, you can, like um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was, who was running our thing during World War II, yeah, he had polio and he was always sitting down or in a car and stuff like that, but at least his health was okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, as far as far as the, as far as the PSYOP goes, I, and I, and I feel bad because there's, there's truthers out there who there's, there's actually three parts to the whole flat earth thing. There are three camps right now. There's pro flat earth. There's people that are actually against it. And then there's another group that say, yeah, flat earth may be a topic, but I, but they, but like you can, you know, they, they don't, they don't trust it. There's something going on in the background. And so you've got some heavy hitting truthers out there, which are, are just saying, look, it's a psyop. It's part of something. And they don't know what it is, but they, because they can't trust it, they can't validate it. So they still think it's a bunch of crap and it's a psyop, but they don't really know which way to go. So it's like, okay, but the psyop part um, trumps, no play on words there, trumps the, uh, any arguments against flat earth. So they'll they'll say, look, I don't want to even debate flat Earth. I'm not going to give you any, any scientific points. But yeah, is it part? Do I think it's a psyop in that it's part of something bigger? Yeah, of course, I, of course I do. I everything that I've seen, it, it, to the, to even down to the the single person me, where people have said, well, haven't you had any government officials? Hasn't anybody come to you, threatened you? And I go, and, and and I was expecting it like in the first three, four months, maybe, you know, it's like if some suits and sunglasses show up at my door and they offer you two things, they offer you two briefcases. One has a bunch of money in it. One has a gun in it. You know, they give you the carrot and the stick at the same time. They say, you choose take, which one. Take, yeah. Which one? Yeah. Take which the money. One gonna, take, well, the yeah money. Take, take, take the money or take the gun. And I've said, well, it's a little different for me because, you know, I never got married, never had kids, and, and I'm in too deep. I can't. And plus, I hate to say this because I don't want to bring Joe Rogan to, into it again, but I, I don't want to use – I don't want to ever be known as the Joe Rogan principle. If if you if you know who he is, where it's like, look up. You know, all you have to do is go on YouTube and type in the Joe Rogan mystery. It's like, look, he was a conspiracy guy. He was a truther, and especially he didn't like the the American space program. He said it's a bunch of crap, and then all of a sudden he flipped, and now he you know he's he's got his own thing, and he won't ever say why he flipped. He just it's like no no I believe in the space program, and and anyone else is insane, and he. I feel bad, and the reason why I bring him up is that he has just gone after Flat Earth with a hatred. He's brought he's brought Flat Earth up on at least because he does a daily show, at least ten different shows. In fact, one just this last week, where he he's like he's calling you know calling them names and saying it's horrible, and he's the one that says it's a psyop. In fact, he he goes so far as to say that that we're being trolled, that the conspiracy world is being trolled, and that Flat Earth is there. Let me let me say this: that Flat Earth. There's quite a few people that says that Flat Earth is here to destroy the truth movement and make all truthers seem insane. I disagree it, it, completely because. If anything, it is the ultimate open-minded test, and all truthers should look at this and say, look, fine, you believe in aliens, you bring in, in reptilians, you believe in the Illuminati, and then everyone's got their thing. Why do you not at least even look at this? It's like, well, because it's insane, and they get angry, and I go, do you even know why you're getting angry? You're getting angry because of the conditioning you've had. You don't even know why you're so upset. I could bring up any topic and it doesn't matter if it's conspiracy or not. I mean, mainstream topics like stem cell research or abortion or black rights or gay rights or uh, uh, you take your pick, right? You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Nobody gets as hot as as they do about this thing, and you got to wonder why. And it, yeah, part of it's because of the conditioning, and the other is it's the only conspiracy you can't like. What you're saying, you can't ignore it entirely. You can't walk. You can't run away from it. You don't want to believe in 9/11. Fine. You live outside the United States. You probably don't care anyway. Um, you don't believe in JFK, fine. You know, you'll never, you don't ever have to look that again. There's a lot of secrets that are buried in the desert that you're never, ever going to know. But this one, this questions everything, including the whole idea of God, uh, which is why the religious institutions have latched onto this, especially Christianity. Um, it is it, the it, ultimate. In, in what way, in what way has, has Christian church, has the church uh, latched onto flat earth? It is their secret weapon that they didn't even know they had against science science and the you know the division between science and religion uh in fact einstein it, it, grant einstein 
has has his problems, but he was probably the most quotable man in history when it because he was clever. Uh, he said that um, the the reason that science and religion will never see eye to eye is because science is stagnant and religion is blind. Uh, you know, they can never, you know, science will never, uh, they will never make leaps of faith and religion will never look at the facts. You know, they, 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 it's all faith for them. So religion, when they look at this, they say, they, what I said in the clues, which was they believe that the, the, the Bible literalists, that's where we're really getting into. In fact, now there's, there's wars that are breaking out between Bible literalists and, and you know, over, over the definition of, of being a Bible literalist, literalist. It's like they can believe all sorts of stuff, but when they, when they look, it's like, okay, are there references to the earth being flat? And they see this as a reaffirmation of the Bible and what you were saying. Look, you, you can't be on the fence about this. If this isn't, isn't a globe, if it was a, a domed a dome or not, if it was a created system, then that means there's a creator. And That's if there's right. a creator, then everything you, changes. Everything, every, changes. everything changes. It's it, like all it, in the Bible, they talk about the firmament. Yeah, they do. It, they do. It, it says it in the Bible. I, I've never read the Quran, but it says it in the Bible. It's no yeah, yeah. Gen Genesis. Genesis one six or um and and even the creepy things. I mean, yeah, I could go on and on about the the earth is fixed and immovable, or the story of Joshua, how he, he asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky, which was interesting. Why not hold the earth? Why do you have to hold the sun and the moon in the sky? Or the Tower of Babel, where was that thing going? You know, if the earth is spinning and moving through space, um, it, you know, what got me the little things was um it, again, you guys can look this up. Was the Werner von Braun headstone? Where where someone mentioned this to me, they go, "What's Werner von Braun's headstone?" And and uh, you you type it in, and it it's it's very modest. It's not like this giant man, you know, standing pointing to the sky and this big cement thing. It is literally this his uh, year he was born, the year he died, and then below it it says Psalms nineteen one. And I I don't know chapter verse very well, and um, I go, "What the heck is Werner?" You know, Psalms nineteen one. And it's pretty simple. And it says, and the firmament shows his handiwork. It's like, why would the father of NASA be talking about a domed structure, you know, in the sky? Why would that be his parting words? Is, is he speaking out from the grave? You know, of all the quotes you wanted to give, you know, about mankind or anything, why would you, why would you say that? Uh, so yeah, the, the Christianity, I mean, yeah, the other, the other four big religions, of course, are, are latching on to it as well. But Christianity's really jumped on this because it gives them ammunition against science. I mean, it really, because it's an all or nothing, it's all or nothing thing. Because if this turns out to be true, then all of a sudden, I mean, think about it. You go back to science and you say, yeah, so you were wrong about this. And what else are, it questions the, you know, not all science, but it's like, what else are you wrong about? Oh yeah, by the way, it was in our literature for thousands of years, which means we were right about this. And then people, you know, think of the masses, what else was religion right about? And then it gets, I mean, the, it's a huge paradigm shift. And, uh, and of course, the, it brings in, of course, the, for me, the big question was, it regardless if God shows up, you know, if everyone figures it out and, and the mass, mainstream announces it and whether or not God shows up, it puts into question accountability, which is we all know that uh, which is you know why that why the astronauts, why the Apollo astronauts wouldn't put their hand on their Bible and swear they went to the moon, which is it makes it very, very real. We all know about the naughty and nice list. Uh, of Santa Claus, right? You're either naughty or you're nice, you know, on Santa Claus, but no one really takes it seriously. But you would take it a lot more seriously if all of a sudden you went down to your living room one night and Santa was in there eating cookies. Then you got to take it way, way more seriously. That's right. If God is real, do you keep doing the things you do now? And I'll, the perfect example I gave was the stoplight one, which was in the United States. And I don't know if you've got them where you guys are, but we have a money-making thing where we put cameras hooked up to stoplights. If you run the red light, you get a picture taken of you, and they just mail you your ticket. And here's the thing. If you take that stoplight or if you take the camera off the stop, okay, all intersections stop, start without, start without these lights or without these cameras on them. But once the cameras are put on them, almost nobody runs the red light. Why not? And I've asked people, and they go, well, because I'll get caught. I go, then why were you thinking about running it in the first place, man? 
And it's, it's because of accountability. Are you going to do the things? Are you going to go to war? Is anyone going to kill anybody? Are you going to kidnap anybody? Oh, let's go for so far as to, are you, are you going to steal anything? Ever again, you're going to take those chances. That's why I use the astronaut example, which was, yeah, the astronauts, you know, are, can you even lie under oath? You know, if, if you're, if you're going to roll those dice, you're going to take that chance. I will never do a malicious thing against anyone ever again. I can't. And I don't even know 100% for sure. I'm only 99% sure because I got a funny feeling that that everything we do and say is tracked. And I think for the most part, you, you don't necessarily get a pass, but it's I think it's amplified once you know as well. If you believe in karma, I think once you know, you know, you know for sure, then is you have no excuse. Well, it's like, it, oh, wait. It, it is interesting because everything is tracked, okay? Um, by, you know, every, you go onto Google, um, everything that I've ever typed in has been collated. Um, yes. And uh, there's a history beyond the history. And I'm sure, you know, so, so I can go into my Google account and turn off the history of that Google yeah. account. But beyond that, there'll be another record of everything that I've searched for in my, you know, associated with this IP address. And oh, yeah. That's that's an excellent point, and and in fact, I may use that, which is uh, I'll extrapolate on this, which is there's lots of things, and people know this. If you're a good internet person, if you're a good tech person, there's certain things you don't type into a search engine, whether you're a conspiracy guy or not, because you got this funny feeling that some that somebody you know, the, and I, there's some things I won't say on air, but there's other things you can't type in, like you know, like how to make a bomb. You know, how to, you know, how to do this, you know, how, how to sell children into white slavery. There's certain things you don't type in because you know full well, if you type in enough stuff, that, those, that, that information is fired off to a database and, and collated. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, uh, send somebody out. Yeah, like, you, for example, I'll, I'll throw this out there. You would never type in, if people think I'm kidding, you would never type in uh, how to kill the president. You know, regardless of what president it is, there's certain things you don't type in because in the back of your head, you know that it's being watched. And that's just us being watched. Imagine a system where everything is tracked. Well, that's yeah. right. And that's what you're talking about. You know, we're talking about AI, we're talking about um, worldly stuff. But there's yeah. the same system that's beyond our, our, our um, five senses. There, yeah. there is a system of karma, whatever you want to call it call it there is a yeah. system of right and wrong that i know in the pit of my stomach when i'm doing something right and i feel good about it and i also know when i'm doing something wrong and i feel bad about it and the yeah. more i can be a good person the better my life becomes the, the darker i get the darker my world becomes and 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 my experience of life comes from the inside rather than the outside in it's the inside out and it's an, yep. in, it's an inside job. I just want to yep. go back to Joe Rogan, because as you're speaking about Joe Rogan, he's really good friends of Alex Jones. What's your opinion of these you know, high-profile um, alternative media conspiracy guys? You know, if we just take Alex as an example. Um, when you get to certain levels, I believe, and uh, it's it's been going. You know, it's no no big secret. I mean, when you the the best way to uh, was it the best way to crush an opposition is to control it, something like that. I, I don't know the exact quote, but it's true. <clears throat> but you don't have to give them everything. Uh, like I'll, I'll use the Joe example before I get to Alex, which was Joe Rogan mysteriously changed from pro NASA to, I'm sorry, against NASA to, to pro NASA. And all they gave him apparently other than maybe the threat was they gave him uh, one season on the sci-fi channel, you know, gave him a, a show, brand new show on the sci-fi channel. And they basically said, look, it'd be up to you to get the ratings. We're not going to carry you through this. And he only ran one season and then it was canceled. And he went for that. He went for that carrot <clears throat> with a lot of these guys, any carrot, is worth going for. So what did they give Alex Jones? Probably not that much by comparison. Yeah, he gets to rub elbows with some of the some of the mainstream guys and, and he's more high profile. All he has to do is keep up the whole manic yelling. Rah, 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 well, 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 hang on. I, th I think his um, marriage settlement, something like 2.3 million, he's got to pay his wife for what if, uh, for his upcoming oh, divorce. Oh, well, there you go. And um, I th there are rumors, you know, Alex never talks about, he never attacks Jews. You know, he, in, in, in Israel, um, he, 
he's meant to. Well, why? Why you can't really in the um, the mainstream media is, and I, I'm not picking on, on groups here because I can't. I'm, I'm I consider myself a pure flat earther, but there are so many Jewish people in the entertainment industry. You can't. You cannot. You will never see a show anywhere in mainstream that you know called "All Jewish People Must You Know Be Suppressed and Then Killed." You're you're never going to see that show. No, and uh, and neither should you. You know, you know, I've no. got lots of Jewish mates, and uh, yeah, and and they're great fun, um, and and really good people. But there is a very small percentage of Kosav Jews who, who have generated and developed this Zionist movement, which I believe. To yeah, be, no, no, uh, I, very destructive. Uh, I, I hear you, but, but when, I'm sorry. When it comes to Alex, though, or anybody else, and Alex is probably the the top of that heap right now, is um, you know they're given certain carrots and they're allowed to you know talk about some things, but there's certain things they're not allowed to talk about. And I'll give you this where. Uh, because I've seen it now in three different people, one of which I actually got on their show, which was George Nori, which was they all, all of them are pro NASA. And I thought that was interesting. In fact, George didn't even tell me until we were on air and he made sure it was like he was almost baiting me. Like he goes, you, because you, you challenge this. I will cut you off and that'll be it. We'll end this show early, which was just to let you know, I believe completely in the moon missions. And it's like, fine, from a flatter standpoint, I've got other avenues I can go down. I don't yeah, need NASA. NASA is very, very helpful. But it was interesting that Alex is on the same boat and so is Joe Rogan. That's right. And, that's right. And it's like, why? And now all these guys will talk about all sorts of other fun things and, and secret societies and, and different different aspects of the conspiracy world, but none of them will touch NASA. Now, and granted, it's like, now let me just jump in there. NASA yeah. was created post-Second World War, post-Operation Paperclip, which brings yeah. me back to my Jewish thread, which where leading Jewish uh, Nazis were brought back from Germany into South America into the UK and into um, North America, and a lot sure. of them went into high-profile positions in the CIA and set up NASA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, NASA is get people will. NASA is a very, very clever organization because it is a it lie. Is, it's a lie. That's it, the first thing. It yeah. Says. Well, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not just a lie, but it is. Everyone says thinks because they wear white outfits. They don't carry guns and they smile for the camera whenever they can that they're not part of the, the military industrial complex. They're, it's like, look, they were founded. They're part of the DOD, the Department of Defense. They were founded. They're unique. They were founded on military technology. They were. You know, their, their rockets were basically uh, an ongoing experimental uh, ICBM missile system that they you know said oh yeah we're putting people on the top of these and we're sending them into space so it's a it's an ingenious operation but then yeah once you look into it deeper and deeper the, the one of the quotes i love so much is that nothing is ever what it first appears to be oh. and that's that that is it with nasa now i look at them because again it, it made so much it clicked so much with me when i when i first got into flat earth because it answered a question for me that that i'd been burning in my head for 10 years which is like why would the americans fake the space program why, why would you spend that much money to, to do all this just so you can say that you've got a flag up there? And it's like, it's, yeah, it's good. You can say, oh, yeah, because well, they're Americans. That's just what they do. It's ego. I'm going, yeah, it's pretty good. But then once I got into the flat earth thing, I was like, oh, I get it. They, it's not that they, they, want, they didn't even want to fake the moon. They had to. You have to fake the moon. You have to fake the space burger. You have to fake everything about it. And you've got to keep the private sector at it. Look at the SpaceX explosion, which just happened a few days ago. Yeah. No, one, no one's going anywhere. No. And, and the Mars mission, no. the Orion program, they, they keep saying, oh, yeah, we're going to Mars, we're going no. to Mars. You know, no one's going to Mars. No, it's, a, it's, it's an enclosed system. The, the rockets, there's great uh, video footage of some guy catching the, the shuttle launch in an airplane. And it, you know, it, it bows over and across, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, across the ocean. And, of course... Uh, I think every single um, astronaut in history has been a Freemason. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that that goes that that goes really without saying because uh, Freemasonry, their big thing is all about secrets, right. and and even the and I've I've heard the stories and I fully believe it, which is you um, 
you bring them, even if they're not Masons, you make them Masons yep. because you, because it's really, you go through the degrees, you give them a crash course and you say, look, you've got to keep the secret. You've got to keep the secret. That's all, you know, it, the, the, the drumbeat of, of the Masonic, despite all the other stuff is involved. It's like, here, here's some really interesting things. You're going to keep it secret. You're going to keep it secret. So by the time, you know, they ramp them up to 32 degrees, I think all of them, they ramp, ramp up to 32 really quickly. Uh, by the time they get there, they're they're basically they yeah it's like no matter what happens you keep the secret on top of that ninety five percent of all uh, astronauts are military anyway so you know they've signed disclosure agreements but yeah it's reinforcements but yeah Mark, and, oh, but go on. the Apollo I think I still do believe even now that the Apollo astronauts were told of exactly why they were faking it but since psychologically they had such a hard time with it every other astronaut after that was basically just signed a piece of paper that said, look, you don't even have a clearance to ask. You're faking this. You don't, you know, it's just another piece of the puzzle. You compartmentalize them. And so, yeah, that's why the ISS guys don't seem to have any psychological side effects. They don't crawl into a bottle or, you know, hide behind their, their doors and, and don't do any public speaking. Look at, look at Scott Kelly real quick, which was, you know, he spent supposedly a year in space, you know, longest man ever. He gets down and what, two, three days later, he quits. He quits NASA entirely. It's like, what? You don't, you're not going to do your book tour? You're not going to do your public speaking tour? Why? Why, why? Why'd you quit? So where's he gone? Don't know. Probably got a consultant job somewhere. Just disappeared. Mm, yeah. He's not. He's, yeah. And, of course, he was the one. I'll, I'll throw this one. I, and I don't know how, how much more you want to go. But I, uh, there was an interesting thing where I remember, because I've been telling people how there was only one blue marble shot taken from 1972 until summer of last year. But what was interesting was, is that I read the press briefing of the blue marble shot of the last year, right? It was, it, you can go to whitehouse.gov or nasa.gov and all this stuff. And, you know, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, tweeted it and Obama did a little speech on it, blah, blah, blah. You know who wrote that press bri briefing? Go on. Scott Kelly. Scott Kelly, yeah, there you Scott go. Scott Kelly wrote the press briefing. It's like, why would the, and he wrote it supposedly from space. It's like, why would he be writing this? He'd be doing this press briefing for me. He has anything better to do. That's the guy that's going to write your press briefing. See, I've got a friend called Ole Damagard, and Ole, um, he tracks all the false flags and he, he looks at them. He works out whether they're real or not, um, yeah. it, it, with, with his in his opinion. And he believes that there's a small production team that goes from site to site. And when you go through the Brussels attack. French attack and so on and so forth. The same characters are being used time and time again. Yep. You know, there, yep. there's one kid, I forget his name, but he's been in four bomb attacks, uh, terrorist bomb attacks. In, what in are the, the odds? Exactly. It's just incredible. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems that there's a very small community right at the top who are pulling the strings and they keep it very much on the inside, you know, yeah. what's really going on. So, so Mark Sargent from Flat Earth, fame to global world destruction you've you've kind of um, thrown out more questions than answers for me this afternoon um how can people get in contact with you and what do you expect you'll be getting up to running up to christmas uh okay easiest way to get a hold of me uh the free site is enclosedworld.com the subscription site is marksargent.com i've got a podcast on true frequency radio uh there's a book called flat earth clues the sky's the limit uh, the apps are also called the flat earth clues uh but honestly if you want to get into this you know don't just don't just look at my stuff all you have to do is go into any search engine type in flat earth and uh, that's it. Or Flat Earth Clues, if you want to find my stuff. Uh, go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth, and or The Earth is Flat, and you will see the most amazing wall of content. And I really envy anyone that's, that's getting into this for the first time, because it will be overwhelming, and you're not going to sleep for weeks. Um, as far as what I'm doing up until Christmas, uh, I am keeping doing what I'm doing. You know, doing more interviews, uh, doing more podcasts, doing you know, interviewing more people. You know, subject matter experts. You know, they 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 still contact me. And in fact, I've I've got a, a statement I'm probably going to read on Tuesday uh, by a by a by a family of aviators, a whole family that is now completely on board with this. Wow, which is really which is really really great and. Um, uh, other than that, you know, just waiting to see, you know, in the United States where I'm kind of holding my breath anyway, because the election's coming up here in two months and, you know, cause I think it's the first week of November 
And I still, in the back of my mind, even though it sounds surreal, I don't know if that election is going to happen. Well, you know, uh, um, they have, they tend to like October for financial collapses and the markets are just booming. They're pumped up yeah. so much. Those, yeah. those markets could come down and we could have something fall out of the sky and, uh, and they could say no elections this time round. That is yeah. a major conversation that's taking place. Um, Mark Sargent, you have been absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much from Europe and we hope to speak to you soon.